All right, we're back. Jay's back. Welcome. I'm glad to be back. I pretty much live here at this point, I feel like. <laughs> With that said, we have the Dark Horse back again and a 2024 GT. Both these cars have the 10 speeds. Both of them have the 355 gears. Naturally, we have to see what kind of power we're talking about. We know we dynoed this Dark Horse in the middle of a hurricane. I'm sure you all remember that. It's gonna be interesting to see. Same day, same dyno, GT versus Dark Horse. Let's get to it. All right, you saw the dyno pulls, both GT and Dark Horse, same day, same dyno. Before we dive into the numbers, I wanna talk about which gear we ran these tests in. Both cars had the 10R80 automatic transmission with the 355 gears in the rear, so we ran both pulls in fifth gear. Both cars had 93 octane in the tank, and both cars had over a thousand miles in the odometer. The GT had roughly 1400 miles in the odometer and the Dark Horse just over 2000 miles. So we really couldn't get more one-to-one -one in this particular test. Another thing I wanna note is that our dyno does read a bit lower than some of the other dynos that you've seen videos out on YouTube. So keep that in mind as we go over the numbers. But again, the dyno is a tuning tool and we're looking at the differences between two trim levels of the new 24 Mustang and the differences are very clear. We also have a Steeda Resonator Delete H-Pipe installed on both cars. So that means again, it is equal across the board. We ran the GT on the dyno first, installed 393 horsepower and 338 pound-feet of torque, again, through that fifth gear. As you all remember, we did dyno this car in the middle of a category two or three hurricane right over us in Valdosta about a month ago. So we ran it again with over 2,000 miles on the odometer and it made 405 horsepower and 353 pound-feet of torque. So within three horsepower of what it made that day, 408. So that kind of debunks the myth about the break-in period, at least on the dark horse. With 300 miles in the odometer, it's all 408 horsepower, and now with over 2,000 in the odometer, it's all 405. Within the noise, again, less than that 1% in terms of peak numbers. So we can safely say that it's not gonna make any more power, at least horsepower, after the break-in period. The numbers may be a little bit lower than what you may have expected, but the differences between the GT and the Dark Horse are there. Both these cars have roughly 20% drivetrain loss, at least on our dyno, versus the advertised numbers at the crank. Now on the S550 for comparison, we had both a 2021 GT and a 2021 Mach 1 on this dyno in the past. The 21 GT is supposed to be 460 horsepower to the crank, and the 21 Mach 1 is supposed to be 480 horsepower to the crank. The GT made an actual 377 horsepower to the wheels at an 18.04% drivetrain loss, and the Mach 1 did 409 to the wheels at a 14.79% drivetrain loss. So a little bit lower there on the Mach 1, but again, across the board, 10R80, fifth gear, the S550 versus the S650, we're all kind of within the realm of where we should be given drivetrain loss versus crank horsepower numbers. Let us know if you want us to run the same test with the manual transmission cars. We all know that the manual transmission does let a little bit more power through to the wheels in comparison to an automatic with the torque converter. So if you wanna see the same test on the channel with manual transmission Dark Horse and GT, let us know in the comments below. But for now, let's get back to Jay and see what he thinks about the results of this test. All right, a lot has happened with this Dark Horse since you all have last seen on the YouTube channel. Tell us what Wayne has done with this car since then. Drag strip, well, track. Well, a little bit of everything. I mean, it turned to a road trip car, to a road course car, to a drag car. I mean, he's treated this thing like it should be treated. And with that said, how many miles are on the odometer now? I think it just rolled over 2,000 on the way here. Perfect, so last you saw it, 408 with 300 and change on the odometer. And Jay, what did it make today? It made 405 to the tire. So three horsepower difference. Honestly, that, that goes to show after 300 miles, there isn't much of a power difference in break-in. I know there are plenty of other people dynoing these cars out there right now, but at the end of the day, we keep saying this, 
every dyno is different. It's a tuning tool. It's something you use to do before and afters. I'm making a change and I'm gonna see what kind of power difference there is after I make said change. So if you have a dyno on the west coast or up in the northeast versus the Steeda dyno, may not be the same numbers and clearly ours are a little bit lower. I guess we call it a heartbreaker dyno. It's definitely a, a little heartbreaking after seeing some of the bigger numbers these things right. have been making other people's dynos, but like you said, every dyno is different. So in comparison to the GT, that we can compare because it's same dyno, same day, GT versus Dark Horse, same transmission, same rear gear. Mm -hmm. We ran them both in fifth gear. The GT made 393 in comparison to the 405, same day. So 393 to 405, we're looking at 12 horsepower. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty on par for the ratings that Ford gives these cars, so. Yeah. I'm happy to see that. And from the crank, this is an active exhaust car, so it's supposed to have 486 to the crank. This one is supposed to have 500 horsepower, so 500 to 46, 14 horsepower, versus 13, what we saw at the wheels on our dyno. I mean, that's. That's, I can't complain about that. Say they're doing exactly what they should be doing. Obviously, the numbers across the board are a little bit lower than everybody else, but at the end of the day, it's a tuning tool, and it just gives us some great information to talk about, right? Yeah. So are you happy with this? I'm happy. I mean, the dyno, dyno numbers aren't everything. I mean, at the end of the day, at the road course, this thing was super fun to drive. It's something you can take to the drag strip and just get it in and go. You don't have to worry about anything breaking or anything like that. I mean, it's just a fun car to drive. The Magna Ride makes it super smooth on road trips. I mean, it's, I can't be held up on dyno numbers. At the end of the day, both these cars are great. We really love the 2024 Mustangs here. Let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are. Obviously the numbers are lower, but the differences are there. So you can see that the Dark Horse is making more power than the GTs on our dyno. And obviously we're seeing that across the board because some others are getting 440 and even 450 with a couple little tweaks and things like that. So at the end of the day, these cars are doing exactly what they should be doing. And I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get both the GT and the Dark Horse on the drag strip, on the road course, get them out there. We're obviously running the Silver Bullet down the drag strip and just ran 11s last week. We'll see what we got coming up next. Aside from that, Jay, tell them where they can find you. You can find me on TikTok, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Velocity50. Uh, I mostly do TikTok, but I post all the content on there. So be sure to follow him as well as Sita. Be sure to hit the like, subscribe, the notification bell, and don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.